<coughs> Thank you, Brother Mike. Thank you, Brother Charles. <coughs> Good morning, church. Uh, have you ever believed in something so passionately that, it, that it's helpful to you, that it is productive, that it works, that you want to tell everyone about it? Um, it, it, it's, it may be a product, it may be um, a, a concept, but you're not being paid, <clears throat> you're not being sponsored, you just believe in it so much, you tell everyone about it. I'll give you a couple examples for this. Right, I've shared before, I love bagels. Like, I, I will take a bagel over a do donut any day of the week, I, I love bagels. But I don't just love bagels, I love Brugger's bagels. They make the best bagels out there. And if you want a good bagel, I'm going to send you over to eat Brugger's bagels. Now, I know not everyone's into bagels, so this illustration may flop for a lot of you. But if you love bagels and you go and you eat Brugger's bagels, you will understand they're the best bagels on the planet. And you will continue to go back to Brugger's bagels. Now, that doesn't benefit me, right? Like, I'm, I'm not getting a benefit out of that. But I so believe that they're the best bagels on the planet, I'm going to send you there. All right, I'll give you a different illustration in case bagels don't work for you. Um, there is an app that my wife and I have used over the last several years where you scan your receipts, and as you scan them over time, um, that you build up points, and then they give you gift cards. So you don't have to do anything other than you scan your receipt from Kroger, from the gas station, from Taco Bell, wherever. You just scan the receipt. And they're just tracking basically you know, how people spend money and how often they do it, et cetera. So you scan the receipt, and then you get gift cards as rewards. I think we've made like $300 over the last five years. So you're you know, 50 bucks a year or whatever. But you, you get them in gift cards, and it takes no effort. So especially my wife will make sure other people know, like, hey, you just you, you, you log into this, and then you get these, these, these perks. Right? Like, we're not getting sponsored by them. Right? We're, we're not you know, rolling in the money because of it. We just think, hey, this really works. I'll give you one more uh, example and option here. Right? Uh, if you like reading books, watching movies, think about your absolute favorite one. You want other people to watch those movies, those TV shows, to read those books, not because, again, that you know, a producer is going to send you a check and saying, thanks for getting someone to spend money and buy that DVD or get on our streaming platform. Like, that's not going to happen. But you love it. And you want to talk about it. You want someone to talk about it with you. And so you will encourage it. I have two friends from college. <clears throat> they have loved this certain series. They've wanted me to read it for years. So this year I finally sat down and starting re started reading it. And so I set up a little group chat. So it's just me and my two friends. And every so often I'll just send them my thoughts of like, I wonder what this character is going to do. And I think this is going to happen in the series. And it's like a 14 book series and it's like, you know, 800 pages of books. So it's, it's a long journey for me to get through. Um, and, and they're just, they, they keep waiting. They're like, oh, just wait till you get to the next part. Just wait till you get to the next part. It gets so good. Wait till you get to the next part. But there, there's this anticipation, there's this excitement when other people do what you love, when other people listen and engage. But when you are the one who love it, like, it does not take a whole lot of effort for you to tell others about it. You can probably see where some of this is going. Uh, we're going to be talking about Jesus this morning. And I, I think there's a concept, if you love Jesus and you are just so passionate about Jesus, like you don't need a sponsorship, you don't need a, a, a ministry degree, like you don't need someone to tell you to go tell people about Jesus. Because you will just fall so in love with Jesus, you want other people to understand this great Jesus. So there is a concept in the book of John. We're going to go to John chapter 1. I know the Sunday morning class has been setting this as well. So if this is a review for some of you in that class, that's great. This is a preview for what's upcoming. That works too. There's so much to learn here, and I will not be able to tackle all the good stuff out of this. So keep going to the Sunday morning class, and you can figure that stuff out. But we're in John chapter 1. There's this concept of the light is so good, but I'm not the light. I'm just a witness to the light. So I want you to pay attention with that in, that in mind. John understands he's not the light. Jesus is the light. So I'm going to read John chapter 1, starting in verse 6. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to bear witness about the light, that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but he came to bear witness about the light, the true light which gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. 
He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to do, he came to his own, and his own people did not receive him, but to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we have seen his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. John bore witness about him, and he cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks before me, because he was before me. For from the fullness we have, we have all received, grace upon grace. For the law was given through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, the only God, who is at the Father's side. He has made, <clears throat> has made him known. I love this section in John. Uh, I love the Gospel of John. I'll, I'll give you a, a quick understanding uh, before I dive into some of these teachings. It's interesting, we, we talk in verse 6, there's a man sent by God, his name was John. That's John, who we know as John the Baptist, not John who, <clears throat> who is writing these words, John the Apostle. So there are two different Johns that happen to be talking in the same section here. Um, but the Apostle John, talking about John the Baptist, says John the Baptist, that John, he understood that his role was to bear witness to the lights. Uh, and so I want to use this as an illustration for us, that Christians bear witness to the light, that that is our role as believers, just like John, that we as Christians, we bear witness to the light. So what John the Baptist does, I think it's just, it's just a, a good illustration for what we ought to do. Um, he knew who he was. He was a messenger, and he knew who Jesus was. Jesus was the light. And as Christians, I think that, that applies to us, right? Like, we know we are Christians. We are God's people. We are the disciples. We're the followers. We are not God. We are the followers. And we know who Jesus is. Jesus is God. He is the light. He is grace and he is truth. And so our job is not to get people to come to us. Our job is to point people over to Jesus. Our job is not to point people to the church our job is not point people to the Bible. Our job specifically is to point people to Jesus. Now, we believe that you will find Jesus in the church, and we believe you'll find Jesus here in the Bible. But our job is not to get you to worship the Bible or worship the church. Our, our job is to get you to worship Jesus, who was the Word, which we call the Bible. He was the Word who became flesh. But our faith is in this Jesus. And so we want to shine light, we want to bear witness to the true light that came into the world, that is Jesus. So we, we drive in our car, Amelia is still in a rear-facing car seat, right? Um, and so in order for us to see her when we're driving, we, we've attached a little mirror on the back headrest. So when we look into our rearview mirror, it reflects onto this mirror on the back seat, and Amelia sits here. So we, we can see her as we drive when we look in the rearview mirror. Um, when it's dark, you can't really see all that well. But you turn a light on, and you can see a little bit better. Now, if I want to really see what's going on, should I shine a light on the mirror that is reflecting, or should I actually shine a light on the child? Shine the light on the child, because that's the real source. And then the mirror picks up the light that is reflecting. Because if I just shine a light at my mirror, I'm just going to get blinded. I'm, I'm not going to really see what's going on. So I, I want to use this as just an illustration when we're talking about we bear witness to the light. We are not the light. We bear witness to the light. We need to know what the true light is. The true light is Jesus. We want to keep everything we do directing people to Jesus. Like this is... It's been my motto. We've put this on our church website. We point people to Jesus. Like, that is our role as Christians. This is just another way of saying it. Christians bear witness to the light. We ourselves are not the light. But you can picture us kind of like a mirror, right? We're supposed to be reflections of who God is. And so when someone who is not a Christian, they live in the world, when they look at a Christian, they should see a Christian redirecting to Jesus. They should not see 
oh, I want to be just like that because that's what it's all about. The that's what it's all about is actually getting people back up to Jesus. The goal is not to get the world to come and look like the church. The goal is to get the world to start looking like Jesus. Right? Do, you, do you see? There, there's some nuance there because the, the church is trying to be like Jesus. So if you can get the world to be like the church, you're at least getting a step closer. But that's not the goal. That's not the end game. What we're trying to really do is bear witness to the light. Can we go and pull up? I think it's verses 7 through 9 is what I have here, right? So you can see, like, I've, I've highlighted the key points here. This is what the Apostle John is trying to say John the Baptist did. He came as a witness to bear witness about the light that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but he came to bear witness about the light. Church, this is what I think our identity is. When you say, what should you be doing as a Christian? I could say you should read your Bible. I should say you should say your prayers. I should say you should give money to the church. I say you should do good works. I could say those things, sure. This is your job as a Christian. When I say, what does a Christian do? We bear witness to the light. We ourselves are not the light. I mean, there's, there's a humbling aspect to this, right? Like, it ain't me. Like, if you want to know what life is all about, don't really take a microscope to my life, please. You're not going to find true light in me. But I hope by my witnessing, by the way I direct, that you can look at me and see me bearing witness to the light. That's the job of Christians. If I can give you a homework assignment, it's to think about, well, how can I bear witness to the light? I, I do think that looks a little bit different from person to person. So the way that you bear witness to the light is going to be different than the way your brother or your sister bears witness to the light. Um, you don't have to judge one another on how you bear witness to the light. I don't think that's our job either. But if that's what you're focusing on, I think you're, you're doing a really good biblical thing. You are bearing witness to the light. I think there are two main reasons that we do this. Uh, aside from it just, I think, being, a, you know, God wants you to tell people about Jesus' concept, right? I want to go back to my opening illustrations. When you passionately believe in something, that this is worthwhile for you, and it's worthwhile for everyone else, that's why you do it, right? Why would we bear witness to the light? It's that we believe the light is real. We believe that it illuminates our lives. We believe it, it gives us grace and truth. Jesus is great for me, and I believe he's great for you. That's why I'm going to bear witness about Jesus to you. Not because God told me I have to do it, right? If, if we use that line of logic, like that's, that's just never going to always work. It might work sometimes, right? So um, we don't have this issue with Amelia right now. She's too young to understand the difference between fruits and vegetables really other than she likes certain ones, doesn't like other ones, but that's not a big deal. She mostly drinks milk. But once you get to a certain stage, you, you, want, you want to eat things that are healthy for you. You want your children to eat the things that are healthy for you. And you could just tell them, you must eat this food on your plate, and that is it. Like, you could do that. I'm not sure that's going to make them fall in love with broccoli. Like, you know, Amelia loves broccoli. I don't think we're going to have to worry about that one. But for a lot of people, if they don't like Brussels sprouts, and you say, you must eat your Brussels sprouts, that's just not going to work, especially if you don't eat Brussels sprouts. That's just, like, if you won't eat what you put on their plate, they ain't going to eat it. That's just basic way of doing it. If you say, oh, that's gross, but it's good for you, your turn. Just, right? Like, so when we say, you need to live a good Christian life, like, Jesus gave me grace and forgiveness. I'm not going to worry about that, but you need to do it. Like, 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 church, think about the way we bear witness. If we are not radically in love with Jesus, if we don't think this is the way, why would anyone else think that? Why would the rest of the world be like, oh, yeah, the Christian way makes sense, when the Christians can't even seem to make it make sense. Like, we must bear witness to the light because we love the light. That's, that's reason number one. Um, but second reason that I think shows up here is that when you bear witness to the light, and the reason we want everyone else to, to see the light, is that following Jesus and receiving Jesus, it makes you a child of God. So we have believed in Jesus. We've placed our faith in Jesus as believers. We have become children of God. When we bear witness to the light, part of the reason we do that is so that everyone else can also receive Jesus and become a child of God. This makes Christianity different than Judaism, right? So, so Judaism, 
which shares a lot of similarities with us. Judaism is going to say you must be a Jew to be a child of God. Or you could be a proselyte and be a second-class child of God. But you're never going to be a, a full rank child of God because you're not an actual Jew. You can do the Jewish stuff right. That's a proselyte. That's, that's someone who is doing the Jewish religion. But you're still never going to be as good of a Jew as a national ethnic Jew who does the Jewish things. Christianity is different. We say it doesn't matter what ethnicity you are. It doesn't matter what language you speak. It doesn't matter where in the world you are. What makes you a child of God isn't who you are. It's who you receive. And it's Jesus. Receiving Jesus makes you a child of God. This makes Christianity different from paganism. So paganism would say you worship other gods and you make sacrifices to these gods in the hope that the God would bless you and accept you as one of his or her own. That's, that's the pagan concept, right? I make this sacrifice hoping that the wind god or that the ocean god or whatever would then accept my sacrifice and do what I want. Christianity is different. Like we, we don't do all the sacrifices to try to get God to do what we want. God has already done what we want, which is for Jesus to die and raise and grant forgiveness and grace to all people. God's already done what we want. He has given forgiveness and eternal life. Now it's about receiving. And so this is why we bear witness to the light. This, this, this makes Christianity different from pluralism, where you have to try to distinguish. There's all of these beliefs, all of these religions out in the world, and you have to try to figure out which one is right. And sometimes you're trying to pick and choose, like, okay, this has a good teaching here. This one's got a good teaching here. This one's got a good teaching over here. Oh, wait, but this one contradicts this one. So never mind. Let me put this one back and let me try this that didn't work, let me try. And, and you're stuck trying to make everything work. Christianity is different from that. You don't have to try to make it all work. Like, Christianity is rather simple compared to all of the other religions in my book. What do you have to do to be saved? you got to receive Jesus. Now, there are some details about what we believe receiving Jesus looks like rather than just saying, hi, I received Jesus, I'm done. We, we think there's something more to it. But this is the basics. What do you got to do? It's not figure out and be smart and get it all right. Like that's the challenge of pluralism. You have to do all the research, and you have to find the right answers out of everything. Now that's hard work. And it's not Judaism, where you have to be of the correct eth ethnicity. And, and it's not paganism, where you have to do all the right things. Christianity, it's, it's about receiving Jesus. That makes you a child of God. Can we pull up, I think I have verses 12 and 13 as the next slide here. But to all who did receive him, and this is why, right? To all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. This is your right. Like, no one can take that from you. Government can't take it from you. Organizations can't take it from you. Preachers, elders, we can't take it from you. Like, this is your right. If you have received Jesus, you have the right to become a child of God. It's not about blood. It's not about will of the flesh. It's not about the will of man. It's not about other people's agendas. You want to be a child of God, you go to Jesus. It's not about doing things right. It's not about the right race. It's not about the right gender. It's not about the right family. It's not about the right name. It's about the right person, Jesus, the light. This is why we bear witness to the light. If you want to become a child of God, you must receive Jesus. And so we bear witness to the light because we want people to become children of God. What does it mean to become a child of God? What does it mean if you are going to be one of God's children? John's going to continue talking about this. I'll give you my, my final good note from all of this. Again, there's so much good stuff in here. I'll give you this last note. What does it mean to become a child of God? Well, you get to receive the blessings of being God's child. And it is because of Jesus who makes you that, that, that child of God. It is because of Jesus that we receive grace upon grace. This is why I want you to become a child of God. This is why I want you to receive Jesus. This is why I want to bear witness to Jesus as the light. It's because of Jesus that we have grace upon grace. I could probably spend three hours just talking about grace. I don't think I need to do that. 
Um, if you want to talk for three hours, again, talk to me and I will talk to you for three hours about this because this is my favorite part of the Christian teaching. Because of Jesus, we receive grace upon grace. Um, the Bible's got a lot of com complexity in it. I'm not going to deny that. I've spent years trying to study it, and I am still new to this compared to many of you who have lived long lives of faith. I think you would probably agree. There is some complexity to our Bibles. But the short, easy understanding is that if you want grace upon grace, it's not figuring out everything in the Bible. That just won't do it for you. If you want grace upon grace, you've got to receive Jesus. Again, I said, he's already done this. Like Jesus has already said, here is grace upon grace. We have to receive it. This is why we bear witness to it. It is already there for the claiming and the taking and the receiving. Grace upon grace is there. Uh, you know, if you go to a buffet, you kind of have to pick and choose what goes on that first plate. Like, hopefully you've, you've got some room in the stomach, you can do multiple plates. But if you don't, you, you got to prioritize what goes on that first plate. Um, I think spiritually, sometimes we struggle with this. What, again, 66 books in our Bible, there's a lot of really good teachings in here. What should go on our plates? Um, should it be creation? Should it be the Ten Commandments? Should it be heaven and hell? Should it be the doctrine of the Trinity? What should go on our plate first? Again, there's lots of good teachings, but if you have figured out heaven and hell and you haven't figured out Jesus, you still missed out on the whole heaven and hell conversation. Right? Creation's a, a great thing to talk about, but if you figured out how old the earth is and you missed out on Jesus, you still missed out on everything. You don't get grace upon grace because you understood everything going on in the Bible. You get grace upon grace because you've become a child of God when you received Jesus. This makes Christianity worth talking about. Grace upon grace. There's a lot of important teachings. I'm not saying we don't teach on them. Jesus taught on other things. He taught about how husbands and wives ought to live and treat one another. He taught about parents and, and little kids and how we ought to receive little children. He taught on how you treat the sinners. He taught on how you treat the righteous. Jesus did a lot of the teachings. But if you want grace upon grace, it all starts with receiving Jesus. That's what he did. That's who he is. Uh, we can go ahead and pull up verses 16 and 17. Okay, this is what John is saying towards the end here. For from his fullness, we have all received grace upon grace. For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Look, the law, <clears throat> the law is not bad. You read through the law, there's a lot of good stuff in the Old Testament. There's a lot of good stuff in the law of Moses. The law is not bad, but it's not grace upon grace. If you want grace upon grace, it is through Jesus and through Jesus alone. We had the law, and the law could not save us. Uh, we, again, we got to do this full reading of Hebrews last night, and that's one of the points um, that the Hebrew author makes is even the high priests had to make a sacrifice for themselves. The law was not able to cleanse them all the time. So every single year, they had to keep going making those sacrifices. Then Jesus came along, and he made one sacrifice for all time, for all people, everywhere. And now there's no more need for the blood of animals, of bulls and goats, as Hebrews would say. There's no more need for that. Because the sacrifice is already done. Grace upon grace is now available for everyone who believes. There is literally no limit to how much grace Jesus can give someone. Like, it, like that just kind of blows my mind when, when I get to reflect and meditate. Again, why I love the Christian religion. How much grace is too much grace? And there's never an answer, right? Peter has that conversation with Jesus one time. He's like, how often do I have to forgive my brother? Can, like, can I cap it at a number? Like, can, we, can we put a number of how many times I have to give grace? And Jesus said, like, sure, I guess 500 times. But like, that's, that's not really the number I'm trying to give you, right? The concept is you keep on forgiving. Christians, why should we keep forgiving other people? Because Jesus has done that for us. We have received grace upon grace. That is what happens when you become a child of God. Um, there's this Geico commercial that I have uh, really enjoyed that's been airing a lot over the last little bit where 
uh, there's a customer at an Italian restaurant. And you know how they come over and they grate fresh cheese over it, right? And so he comes over and he says, just say when. He starts grating. And the customer just sits there. The guy just keeps grating and grating and grating. And, and the guy is just smiling up at him. And, and the server, like, this, there's this pile of cheese. The commercial starts, as it's a dad and his daughter. His daughter's probably like eight or nine years old. And he just keeps grating this cheese, grating this cheese. Sweat starts dripping down the waiter's face. He's grating this cheese, he's grating this cheese. It's just piling up, piling up, piling up. It starts overflowing. It's over the neck now of this dad who's just sitting there. The guy's like, just say when. It just keeps going, keeps going, keeps going, keeps going. Finally, the guy says when. The camera pans over. He's got this young adult woman sitting across from him, which is clearly the daughter has grown by like 20 years, right? And then the guy comes over and says, would you like some fresh cracked uh, black pepper? He says, yes. And he just starts cranking and cranking and cranking. Like, the point, the, the Geico commercial is like, you know, if you love cheese, you, you, you go to an Italian restaurant. If you want savings, you go to Geico. I'm not trying to give you a promo for Geico. I just think it's really funny. <laughs> this illustration, it just keeps going. Like, there's never a stop, and at, at no point is the one who is doing it allowed to say, I think you've had too much cheese, right? Like, if, and if you go out to an Italian restaurant today, like, let me know if you try this. If they go, oh, sorry, too much cheese, I'm done. Like, that, that's never been my experience. I, I think you could probably run out of the block of cheese and then say, wait a second, let me just go get some more cheese, then put it in to keep on grinding. This is the way grace works, okay? When I say Jesus gives grace upon grace. It's like, you sin, Jesus gives grace. You sin, Jesus gives grace. You sin, Jesus gives grace. And it just keeps going. There is no end to the amount of grace that Jesus keeps giving. I love the Christian religion. I could talk about this all day long. I won't keep you guys here because I know I've talked about Italian food and cheese and now you want to go out to eat. But when we say, why should we as Christians bear witness to the light of Jesus I want everyone in the world to experience this grace upon grace. Because, man, I can't figure it all out. I can't put my life together. I can't live the way I ought to live in order to go to heaven. But you know what I can do? I can receive Jesus. And if you have not figured that out yet, I want you to figure it out. I want to talk to you. I want to set time. We can talk in detail. We can talk for hours if we want. There's plenty of evidence you only need a couple minutes sometimes to say, I, all I know is I need more grace. And my answer to you will always be, all I know is Jesus is the only one who can give it to you. Man, if you want to talk about grace in Jesus, if you've been hurting in your Christian life and you just want some prayers and you need some extra grace in your life, the elders and I, we will be praying with you. We will be encouraging you. We want you to come to Jesus and receive grace upon grace. If we can help you, if we can pray for you, we're going to offer a time that you can come forward now as we stand and as we sing.